Misnadi actually ended his own life to follow his friend who helped him. He was actually killed in the Battle of Osaka. What do you think? It just doesn't make much sense at all. He ate too much sea bream tempura. I, I totally believe it could be possible. The, the fact that he got so close makes it, makes it incredible. Exactly, exactly, yeah. exactly. I'd love to move on to the third theory I'd like to talk about today. It's actually about Ishida Mitsunari. Ishida Mitsunari, another really, really famous warlord in Japan too. So this theory inside this book talks about he was actually alive after Sekigahara, the battle with Tokugawa clan. So of course, most theories say that the Sekigahara battle only lasted for about six hours. It ended very quickly. And Ishida Mitsunari was caught and he got his neck caught off and he was executed. That this is the common theory that we learn at school too. But in this book, it explains that he actually got away. He had his Kagemusha died for him. And the real Ishida Mitsunari got away. He actually asked a different warlord called Satake Yoshinobu. For, and he asked for Satake Yoshinobu's help. Now, Satake Yoshinobu was also a subordinate of the Toyotomi clan. And in the past, once uh, the Satake Yoshinobu actually made a major mistake in one of his missions that was given by the to Toyotomi family, but Mitsunari actually um, recommended to not um, lower his name, his lower his rank. So he it says that Satake Yoshinobu actually um, was helped by Ishida Mitsunari once, so he wanted to help back. So he actually ran away together with Satake Yoshinobu, and Satake Yoshinobu was actually based in a place called Dewa Kuba, Kubota at that time, which is Akita Prefecture up north of Japan, all of a sudden in such a, a northern area, countryside area, Akita Prefecture. And in that prefecture, even today, there is a temple called Kimyoji. Kimyoji, it literally means life return temple, yes. And he was actually hidden in that temple as a Buddhist monk from Chiyong-in Temple from Kyoto, actually. And in that Kimyoji in Akita Prefecture, all of a sudden, like I, I believe Ishida Mitsunari hardly had any relationships with um, the Akita Prefecture up north, but there's actually a monument of Mitsunari even today in that temple. And in this, in this book, it says that uh, Mitsunari actually committed seppuku to end his life when the, the, his friend Sate, Sate Kiyoshinobu died of disease. When he was 74 years old, Mitsunari actually ended his own life to follow his friend who helped him. So what do you think about this one? I think this is out of the four theories we're going to be talking, we've been talking about today. This one is the one that has the least amount of evidence, actually. Yeah. What do you think? I completely think it's it's not necessarily that that plausible at all. I I, I don't mm. think um, I don't think he would have made it out. I, mm. I I have seen um, other other kind of funny theories. I know in one of the Samurai Warriors video games, uh -huh. it, it's actually you know Shima Sako and actually helps him escape somehow. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, they get away. Yeah. But um, I I I don't think that at the end of the Battle of Sekigahara. Uh, there would be anyone who would help him. Uh, we have mm. to remember that already all, all the forces on uh, as a part of the Western army were very shaky regarding if if they even wanted to be there, if they even wanted mm. to support uh, Mitsunari. So the idea that any of them would actually kind of help hide him and get him away, I, I don't believe that at all. At most, I, I bet the ones that had survived the battle were probably going to fall in line and bow to Tokugawa now because obviously now Ieyasu was the strongest in the land. Why do anything against him at this point? Why help Mitsunari get away? Um, it just doesn't make much sense at all. Well, this is really interesting. Yeah, so far, you know, talking about the three theories so far, this one is the one that you would go against then. Completely. Yeah, I, I would, I would mm -hmm. go against this one. Yes, especially again, as I was saying, you know, this has the least amount of evidence. And earlier I was kind of like standing on the side of this book, of course, and talking about, you know, the Kimio G, the Kimio Temple in Akita Prefecture. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if Satake Yoshinobu was in Akita Prefecture and he, he was actually friends of Ishida Mitsunari, maybe he just built a monument there with, mm -hmm. you know, not, not saving him. Yes, but he just made a yeah. monument there in a temple close by. He could have just done that, right? So that isn't really a very strong proof to say that he actually brought him there. 
But the story of him committing、um, seppuku when he was 74 years old after、uh, Yoshinobu died、uh, from disease is a really interesting story. But I think, again, it's a little bit too beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, exactly.、Yes. We, we have to remember that, you know, he, he wasn't a very well liked person. And the people that, that did consider him to be his, his friends were, were already. Going to be siding against him as it was, like people like、mm. um, Otani、uh, Yoshitsugu. You know,、mm. he, he, although he would end up siding eventually with、uh, Mitsunari, he had already made up his mind to go join the Tokugawa. It, it,、yeah. it was, it, it's, it's hard to find people who actually liked him enough、mm. to have, have done so. To risk、like、their lives and everything. Okay, then、uh, poor Ishida Mitsunari. Then, <laughs>、yeah. well, now would it be cool if he survived? Absolutely, that'd be another. <laughs> thing <laughs>、exactly. I found out, yeah, that'd be really cool, but I, I don't believe it.、Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, thank you so much. So, then I do have one more person, a very, very famous warlord I like to talk about. Of course, number four, we're going to be talking about Tokugawa Ieyasu. Tokugawa Ieyasu,、um, in what we study. At school, we say, of course, the Battle of Osaka was a battle that finally、um, finished the fight between the Toritomi family and the Tokugawa family. And in what we learn at school, we were taught that he was about to get killed but by Sanada Yukimura, but he survived and he established the,、um, the Edo Shogunate and he died right after the Battle of Osaka. But, but in this book, it says that he was actually killed in the Battle of Osaka. Not、uh, specifically, it, it says that there's actually different theories of how he actually died. Some people say he was actually killed by Sanada Yukimura. Some people say he was killed when he was trying to run away from Sanada Yukimura. We're not too sure about that, but、um, in this book, he says that he was actually killed in that battle. And there are three、um, evidence to back this up. Number one, there is a temple in Osaka called. Nanshuji, Nanshuji Temple. Now, earlier I was saying Toshogu was the shrine that、um, worships Tokugawa Yasu, but this temple in Osaka actually worships、um, Tokugawa Yasu, and they have his grave there in Nanshu Temple. And the roof tile of this temple actually has the Mitsuba Aoi Kamon. Again, I said earlier the Mitsuba Aoi Kamon was. Very strictly restricted by the Tokugawa family for everyone to use. And that's the reason why they had to invent the Kataba Mimon, the Kataba Bikamon. That's really similar to the Mitsuba Aoi, but it's a little bit different based on a clover kind of thing. And also, there are records of Hidetada and Iemitsu, the second and third generation of Tokugawa family, actually visiting Nanshu Temple and praying there. Yes, there's actually records left in this temple even today of the two actually coming to the temple. Like, why would they suddenly go to a temple that's in Osaka? Pretty far away from Edo, right? And number two, what we learn, what we generally know about how Tokugawa Ieyasu died, the common theory it says in this book is that he ate too much sea bream tempura. Okay, so he ate too much sea bream tempura and he suddenly died an year after the Battle of Osaka. <laughs> That's a little, he was a、um, health otaku. He was like a healthy, um, he did everything to keep himself healthy, right? You know, with all of the,、uh, the food culture he created and everything, he's very famous for that too. Him suddenly killing himself, eat, eating too much tempura sounds very weird. He was really old too, right? And eating too much and dying sounds a little bit weird, first of all. And Some in this book it says maybe the person who was alive was his Kagemusha. And because the people around him didn't want anyone to notice that it wasn't Tokugawa Yasu, maybe he, they wanted him to die as soon as possible. So they poisoned him. So suddenly dying after the Battle of Osaka was a little bit too weird. So maybe just you know, having an ear after that and killing him with poison would be like a good reason for him to die, right? So that's the second reason. The third one. It is said that his Kagemusha was actually originally a monk called Keisai. So there is his name. His re-、uh, records say his name actually. No one knows who he was, who Keisai was. Some people say maybe it was Tokyo Yasu's twin brother all of a sudden. Maybe it's his、uh, different brother with a different mother. But there are actually records of him right before he was about to die with the tempura. There's a record saying that this Keisai, or in other words, in this case, Tokyo Yasu, the Kagemusha, said to Date Masamune when he was about to die that please take care of my nephew, Hidetada. There's actually records of Date Masamune written, written down that Keisai, or 
Tokoyasu said this to him before he died. So these are the three evidence to back up this fourth story. So what do you think, Nick? I think this was really, really interesting. I, I love this one. This, this is one of my favorites.、Um, mm-hmm. I, I remember first reading about this actually in, in an old Stephen Turnbull、uh, mm. book. And when I was in, in Japan、uh, traveling around, I was with a, a, a tour guide, this woman named Chiaki, who actually lives in Osaka.、Mm. And、mm. I, I told her about this story, and she had never actually heard of it. And I, I said, There's、oh. actually a, a grave there. She's like, I don't believe that. <laughs> There's no way. Like, but I, I, I fully actually I, I would like to believe this one. I would like to believe、mm. this one is true because it would be、mm. such a, such a, it, it makes sense. It, it makes sense. And it, 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 it goes to grow the legend of、uh, Sanada uh, Nobushige uh, Yukimura. Y- Yukimura.、Um, Because he,、uh, the whole idea of,、um, if I can explain basically the, what was going on、yep. uh, leading up to the battle,、um, this was at the Battle of Tinoji,、uh, mm. where basically、um, they had、uh, the Toyotomi forces who had been kind of routed、mm. from the previous battle they were in and they were being forced back to、uh, Osaka Castle.、Mm-hmm. And the Toyotomi forces, which were largely now under the command of Yukimura, established themselves in a defensive position. That、uh, the Tokugawa forces were probably going to want to establish themselves at in order to continue the siege of Osaka.、Um, but now that、uh, Yukimura had set his forces up there, it kind of ruined、uh, Ieyasu's、uh, plans to set up. But on top of that, the Tokugawa forces were just in complete disarray with how they were forming. And Ieyasu actually took it upon himself to, to ride out with maybe like one or two attendants and was trying to organize the lines. Uh, he was yelling orders all around, and the battle started to swing in, in the favor of the Tokugawa. But seeing Ieyasu out alone, sort of issuing commands, is when Yukimura took the opportunity. He's seeing all hope was fading. He charged directly at him. So, this idea that he caught him and killed him, it would be so incredible if that was true. And the fact that he only died a year later, it really makes you wonder like, did he actually get him? Like, and the, the fact that there's a grave there, and it's like, <laughs> Did, did he catch him? Did he actually get him in time? Like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that's crazy. It, he、yes. came like just a hair away, it sounds like, from, from killing him. It's, it's ridiculous. Exactly. And especially it's because、um, the Tokugawa family eventually won and created the Edo, Edo Shogun, right? It started the Edo period. So it is easy to imagine that they wanted to hide such a fact. Yeah, yeah. So that is one thing, too. Definitely. They would want to hide that their leader was killed.、Mm-hmm. Of course, by this time,、uh, Ieyasu was no longer、um, shogun anymore. He, he had been yep, shogun yep. actually <laughs> since, since 1603.、Uh, yep, yep. But、uh, Hidetada, his son, was in charge of He was、mm-hmm. the new shogun. But、yep. the, the idea that if, if、uh, Ieyasu were to have been killed, that would just be so, <laughs> just so monumental, such a monumental blow to, to、exactly. the status and everything.、Mm-hmm. That would just be crippling if,、mm-hmm. if, he, if mm-hmm. he was killed. By these traitors, by by the other side, and it, it might have gone、okay. to legitimate their legitimize their side to some degree that they actually killed the larger than life figure like、mm-hmm. uh, Ieyasu. All right, so then you would think that this could be possible too.、Then. Oh, yeah, I, I totally believe it could be possible. The, the fact that he got so close makes it makes、it's, it incredible. exactly, exactly,、yeah. exactly. Because, yeah, the common theory says too that Toko Ieyasu was just about to commit seppuku because he could have been killed, right? So,、mm-hmm. He got that close, then it, you know, it could be, of course, that he actually did get there. So, yeah. I think out of the four theories we talked about today, I think the fourth theory would both of us, I think, agree that this is probably one of the, one of the, the mysteries that could be really close to reality, I think. Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much. So, those、yeah. were the four theories and the four warlords that I wanted to discuss with you today. This was amazing. So much fun, definitely. I mean, again, out of all the friends that I know of, you're probably the one that are most professional in this field of talking about the single Gucci Dai. So, oh, thank I think you. you. You definitely know a lot more than my friends do, you know, my Japanese friends do. So, Thank you. It was great. I was able to, to listen to your opinions and such. And I think, you know, sometimes in these Japanese books, sometimes there are、um, some theories or stories that are not translated into English,、mm-hmm. too.、Oh, so yeah, I thought this was、part. a really, really fun、um, idea to do this、yeah. with you. So thank you so much. See, that, that's the cool thing. The, 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 hard,、mm-hmm. the hard thing on, on my end is that,、um, mm. in terms of learning stuff about the Sengoku period, Mm-hmm. Is that not everything is translated over in, in Japan? Obviously, you have so much more、uh, resources, so many more books, and everything. 
and what what I have access to is just you know a fraction of that. So it's it, it really is is amazing to see all the extra stuff that that you have access to. And hopefully uh, when I eventually get to get to move over there for my 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 job I have over there when when the company when the country reopens. Uh, I'll be able to dive into more of that. Then, um, Nick, before you go, is there anything you'd like to say to the viewers watching right now? If, if you want to learn more about uh, the, the Sengoku Jidai or, 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 or Samurai history in general, come come check me out. Otherwise, I want to thank you so much for having me on here. Thank this was a great so show. Much, go. Nick. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Nick. All right. So then this was an amazing collaboration. Thank you so much. Josh. Yes. All right. Then thank you so much. Thank you so much for thank watching, you. everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>